Steven Spielberg couldn't get into film school. Michael Jordan did not qualify for his high school basketball team. And Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's, had no more than a 10th grade education. They didn't have that it factor. What they had was what we call the grit factor. The fact is that most of the incredibly successful people are completely average in all of those things, but they do have this persevering quality to them. Let me jump in this way. When scaling a team, especially for an ad agency, how do you spot talent? You know, one of the first things I do, I never look at where anybody went to college. It's meaningless. Okay. Okay. Uh, we had a policy in our agency uh, that anybody that wasn't nice was not going to get hired because you need, a, it takes a whole agency to, you know, like a village to create something. That's right. And people don't do anything by themselves anymore. So I look for people that are bright, have a great sense of humor okay. and able to think laterally. You know, there are too many people who just follow it and follow it and follow it. And when they can lead a team, it's when they lead a team and everybody feels comfortable, like I said, coming up with a, even a bad idea because so many of them become good ideas. Uh, and that's what we try to force with the agencies and attitude. attitudes. As a matter of fact, the one thing that get you fired is if you yelled at a messenger or somebody who was in a So system. special. I yeah, love that. It, it I love deflates that. all the creativity. I love that. So uh, the, one of the first things I want to interview people is uh, I try to see what kind of sense of humor they have. Because people who are very, very funny and mm -hmm. witty mm -hmm. are able to make those synaptic connections that it's a great. lot of other people can't, right? That's the basis of humor is things that don't go together, you know, a... a, a, a a well-dressed man slipping on a banana peel. That doesn't go together. So right, that, that's right, funny. Right, right, right. If it happens to you. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Next question. What elements make a great ad? And, we'll, we'll, and let's focus on print, on a print ad. Yeah, I wouldn't even say ad. I would say a campaign. Okay. Right, because Good. it's no longer Correct. just the ad. Correct, it's, right. It's, it's the, the whole, whole multi-channel effort. Uh, what I believe is that you need to start not with the products and the attributes, but you need to think... What role am I pay, playing in somebody's life? There's in, extrinsic goals, which is, oh, I'll save a lot of money. In it. And then there's intrinsic goals, like with Dawn, I'm helping the environment. More and more we see that people can be connected better when they have these goals of the soul from the company. Mm -hmm. And so if you're just going to be talking about price point and obvious comparisons, it kind of, you know, we get five to 7,000 messages a day. So right. like cooked spaghetti, only a couple stick on the wall. So... <laughs> It's very important that your brand believes in something. And this is where a lot of people fall short. A lot of clients fall short because they're too interested of the ecosystem, the bottom of the funnel, where people are going to make that, mm -hmm. that decision. It's like somebody goes to a store to buy sneakers. Mm -hmm. Or somebody goes to a store to buy sneakers, but they know they want to they, they know they want to buy Nike first. Why? Because it's the branding. And that does a lot of the job for you. You know, with Clairol, they had a million brands, but because Clairol had, you know, or Herbal Essence, it had a very, very good sort of mantra. Mm -hmm. And even though it was funny, it right. was like, I'm going to buy a Clairol brand. Now I just got to decide which one. And we need to do more of that because we're, we're getting very lazy and just talking about the price points without thinking about what the brand really stands for. You, you mentioned that you speak, you speak around the world. In fact, that's what... A special shout out to Jeffrey Hazlett and the C-Suite Network. I saw Linda up on stage, and I'm like, I got to get Linda on the show. <laughs> so, so, you know, talk about your speaking engagement. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, well, I have a website called okay. KaplanFailerProductions.com, and okay. in there you can find out a little bit about me and see some of my work, see one of my speaking engagements, and then buy the books, whatever you want to do, and also ask, you know, Right, make question. It, you know, if you if somebody wants to book me for something, you know, I started. I I've always loved speaking, um, but I always had to do it in my off time when I Robin and I were running. Right, a company. you're running an agency with 800 plus uh, yeah, exactly uh, people. Uh, and so three years ago, when I kind of left advertising, although I am still doing some advertising and I have some consultants, sure. and that's a lot of fun. I uh, found that I I wanted to make this more of a second career, the speaking because it's my way of sort of imparting whatever knowledge, at, you know, that right. I've accrued right. uh, through the books that Rob and I have written and sort of experienced along the way. How can I empower people to feel good about who they are or motivate them to do better as we do in Grit to Great? And it's taken me to all parts of the world. Amazing. And, in, and also a lot in the U.S., but, you know, India and, and Spain and Mexico. It's, it's phenomenal, and I meet 
people from all walks of life, none of whom were in advertising. <laughs> and it's just a joy to be able to impart things. You know, when Grit to Great, I think one of the most wonderful things in the research that uh, was done at the University of Pennsylvania by Angela Duckworth is that it's not brains, it's not a genius IQ, it's not virtuoso talents that get you ahead. It's this trait of grit, which we define as guts, resilience, initiative, and tenacity. Right. You know, we're ad people. Right. We had a, right. you know. <laughs> but it's really true. Uh, Colin Powell was a C-minus student in college until he discovered his love of the military, turned his life around. Steven Spielberg couldn't get into film school. Michael Jordan did not qualify for his high school basketball team. And Dave Thomas, founder Unreal. of Wendy's, had no more than a 10th grade education. They didn't have that it factor. What they had was what we call the grit factor. And I love telling that because, you know, most of the people like myself are average people, and it's too easy to say, I'm not successful because I wasn't born brilliant. Or I'm not successful because, you know, I, I don't have that entrepreneurial, you know, talent. I don't play, you know, piano and all that. The fact is that most of the incredibly successful people are completely average in all of those things, but they do have this persevering quality to them. Uh, such a great uh, tip, and 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 especially for the listeners of this program, you know, it 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 it, it comprises of so many small business owners, um, you know, who have to stick it out, you know, stick it out day in and day out. Yes, and, and you those, really need that. Without the grit, you're toast. Yeah, you know, uh, it, and it's also embracing failure. We call it failing forward because mm -hmm. the most successful people, and we interviewed dozens of people for the book, the most successful people are the ones who had the most failures, were willing to fail. James Dyson, I call my Siri of failure. He's the one who invented, he invented the bagless vacuum cleaner. Okay. And you see this erudite British man talking about that. But what you don't realize is that it took him 15 years, and he had 5,126 prototypes that totally sucked. <laughs> or perhaps I should say they didn't. No pun intended there. Or perhaps I should say they didn't suck. You know? yeah. And he said, I'm glad I had all these failures <laughs> because... I was looking to do something that was evolutionary. I ended up doing something revolutionary. And so, and you know, there's a very famous lawyer in New York, not Michael Cohn, who is considered brilliant. People say he's a genius because he has memorized every uh, case study in the law books. We're talking about thousands and thousands of them. Every word. So they say he's a genius. He said, I'm not a genius, I'm dyslexic. And when I was in law school, I knew that I would be unable in real time when I was in Amazing. court to be able to read through the case, Amazing. so I knew I had to commit it to memory. As a matter of fact, people who have had uh, some kind of misfortune, mm -hmm. whether there's a learning, like a dyslexic, or mm -hmm. they had a lot of obstacles to get through, they have a greater tendency to become successful. A greater tendency. People who are born brilliant, and I love this fact because it makes okay. me feel so good, okay. only have a 2% chance of becoming successful because they don't know how to m beat a challenge because everything is effortless until they get out in the real world and they try to start something and they hit a roadblock and they go, how could that So be? it's the EQ over the IQ. Definitely. I guess as a final closing uh, takeaway, what could you share with the listeners that, you know, and anything from, from, from your... I know it's going to sound saccharine, but my first thought is be nice because when you drill down, when you, especially for younger people who are getting, you know, it's not about, as Robin says, it's not about networking, it's nice working. Those deeds will, every time you do something nice for somebody, it's like a positive imprint, and those imprints are like seeds. And when you get to be my age, again, it's your 20s. Your 20s, yes. Right. Uh, it pays off because I've had so many businesses come to me, they like my work, but also somebody at the agency did some good deed and they mm -hmm. remembered it. And, mm -hmm. they were, and so do it because then you create this fertile universe. And you know what? You're much happier. You look in the mirror every day and you're, you, you like what you see. And that makes you a harder worker and gives you more grit. I love the honor of interviewing C-level executives and sharing their great advice and perspective on Mind Your Business. I'd love to get your feedback. Post it in the comments below and subscribe. You'll never miss an edition of Mind Your Business.